Imagine lining up every Duracell battery made in a single year. You'd wrap around the Earth more than twice. That's a mind-bending number of copper tops powering everything from remotes to smoke detectors. But how does Duracell actually pull off this insane pace of 10 billion batteries a year? Think about how invisible batteries are to us. They're everywhere. The remote you throw at the couch cushions, the flashlight you only remember when the power goes out, the smoke detector that suddenly starts chirping at 2 a.m. and makes you question every decision in life. We take them for granted until the moment they die, and then, suddenly, it's a crisis. Duracell has become the name people trust in those exact moments, partly because of that iconic copper top design, but mostly because for decades they've built a reputation for reliability. And yet, their story doesn't start with your TV remote or your kid's toy. It begins nearly a century ago and in a completely different world. Back in the 1920s, Samuel Rubin wasn't dreaming about AAs and AOAs sitting in blister packs. He was a scientist focused on developing better battery cells for specialized equipment. Alongside businessman Philip Rogers Mallory, they formed a company that at first made mercury batteries. And while mercury doesn't sound like the most user-friendly ingredient today, back then it was a breakthrough. These batteries became especially valuable during World War II, when the military needed cells that wouldn't give up in tropical humidity. The devices they powered had to keep running, no matter the climate, no matter the conditions. That reliability in the middle of war zones built the foundation for what would later become Duracell. The real shift happened in the 1960s. The company pivoted toward alkaline batteries, the kind you and I use every single day, and they needed a name that captured the promise, durable plus cell, Duracell. It was simple, but it was a promise. These little powerhouses would last longer than the competition. That brand identity solidified even further in 1973 when they rolled out the copper top design. Suddenly, you didn't even need to read the label to know it was a Duracell. It was sitting there in every grocery aisle, shiny and confident. That little bit of metal wasn't just branding, it was genius marketing that burned the image into consumers' heads. Ownership of the company bounced around over the years. First Kraft, then Gillette, then Procter & Gamble. Today, it's owned by Berkshire Hathaway. Yes, that means Warren Buffett, arguably the most famous investor alive, controls the batteries in your remote. You can almost picture him smiling every time you buy a four-pack, knowing that even in the age of smartphones and high-tech gadgets, the humble AA battery still makes the world go round. So what actually makes up a Duracell battery? On paper, the recipe sounds like a science experiment that you'd probably fail in high school chemistry. Zinc, manganese dioxide, potassium hydroxide, graphite. Wrap that in steel, cap it with brass, done. Except, of course, it's not nearly that simple. Zinc acts as the anode or negative terminal. Manganese dioxide is the cathode, the positive terminal. Potassium hydroxide is the electrolyte the part that lets ions move back and forth. The outer casing is nickel-plated steel, tough enough to handle the chemical reactions inside while keeping everything sealed away. And that copper top? It's not just decoration, it's a nickel-plated brass cap designed to help conduct electricity cleanly into your device. Now, lots of companies could throw these materials together and call it a battery. But Duracell's entire reputation rests on the fact that they don't just toss stuff in a mixer and hope for the best. They use proprietary additives, precise formulas, and rigorous quality control that ensures consistency across billions of units. Every batch of raw materials gets tested before it even enters the production line. If the zinc isn't pure enough, if the manganese dioxide isn't up to spec, it doesn't make the cut. That's how they guarantee that whether you're buying a Duracell in Georgia or in Belgium or in China, it'll perform exactly as expected. And speaking of Georgia, Duracell's flagship factory in LaGrange is basically a cathedral of battery making. Imagine a production line moving so fast it pumps out 300 batteries every minute at each assembly station. 
Multiply that by multiple lines and you're looking at over 3,500 finished units per minute. It's like popcorn in the microwave, except instead of a snack, you get enough power to keep half the gadgets in your house alive. The process starts with preparing the cathode mix, which is basically a carefully engineered cocktail of manganese dioxide, carbon, and secret ingredients Duracell doesn't talk about. This mix is pressed into little rings or sleeves that form the outer portion of the battery's core. Meanwhile, zinc powder is prepared with its own additives to make it more conductive and less prone to corrosion. These two powerhouses, the anode and cathode, are kept apart by a separator, a thin paper-like material that lets ions pass but stops the two from directly touching. Think of it like putting up walls between roommates who really shouldn't be living together but still need to share the Wi-Fi. The steel casing, which will become the body of the battery, is formed and nickel-plated to fight corrosion. The copper tops are stamped out of brass sheets, polished and set aside for later assembly. Then comes the moment when everything comes together. The cathode rings slide into the casing. The separator goes in next. The zinc mixture fills the center. A carefully measured amount of potassium hydroxide electrolyte is added. And finally, the copper top is attached, along with a plastic insulating washer to make sure the positive and negative sides don't accidentally connect. Sealing the unit is a critical step. Too loose and the battery could leak too tight, and internal pressure could cause problems. Duracell has spent decades perfecting this process. Once sealed, the battery moves straight into testing. Unlike some rechargeable batteries that need forming, alkaline cells like Duracell's are ready to go as soon as they're built. But that doesn't mean they skip testing. Oh no, every single one faces a gauntlet of checks that would make a Navy SEAL sweat. High-speed cameras look for visual defects. Automated systems measure voltage, resistance, and capacity. Samples from every batch are tortured with stress tests, extreme temperatures, accelerated aging, and leakage tests that simulate the worst conditions you could throw at them. One of Duracell's most important promises is that their batteries won't leak and destroy your expensive gadgets. That's why they put every unit through conditions harsher than anything you'd see in normal use. It's like training for the Olympics, just so the battery can live a quiet life inside your garage door opener. Packaging is another area where Duracell has flexed its muscles over the years. When they rolled out Duralock technology, promising a 10-year shelf life, it wasn't just a marketing slogan, it was a legit shift in how batteries were preserved. By sealing them more effectively, Duracell made it possible for people to toss a pack in a drawer and still expect it to work a decade later. That's not just chemistry doing the heavy lifting, it's smart packaging design working hand in hand with the product itself. And they didn't stop there. They added little power check features so you can actually test a battery before you put it in your device. It's like a sneak preview that saves you from the classic is it the remote or the battery that's dead? Guessing game. For smaller coin-style batteries, Duracell went one step further and created child-resistant packaging. Anyone who's ever dealt with toddlers knows they'll try to put just about anything in their mouth, so making sure those shiny little discs are locked behind tough blister packs is a lifesaver. Literally. Sustainability plays a growing role too, and Duracell has been quietly reshaping how its products reach us. Over the years, they've cut down on excess packaging, ditched unnecessary plastic windows, shrunk the overall pack sizes, and boosted the amount of recycled material they use. Their philosophy is straightforward. When you're selling billions of packs every single year, even small changes add up to massive differences. Less plastic, less cardboard, less waste. It's a ripple effect that becomes a wave when you're operating at Duracell's scale. And it's not just what you see on the store shelf. Inside their factories, like the flagship plant in Georgia, they've taken sustainability just as seriously. That facility has committed to sending zero waste to landfills, which means everything is either reused, recycled, or repurposed. They've also slashed water usage by millions of gallons annually through efficiency upgrades. For a company that runs production lines day and night, Cutting that much resource use is no small feat. 
These shifts might not be as flashy as the copper top design, but they matter and they show that even in the world of disposable batteries, there's room for responsibility. Duracell isn't stopping at alkaline either. The copper top may be their superstar, but behind the scenes, they've been steadily building a lineup that covers just about every corner of modern life. They've got rechargeable batteries for people who hate running to the store every other week. Ultra tiny hearing aid batteries that pack a surprising punch, but sleek power banks that keep your phone alive when you're traveling, and of course, the optimum line. That one's built for the gadgets that seem to inhale energy. High drain devices like game controllers, motorized toys, and fancy flashlights. Or for anyone who just wants their batteries to hang in there a little longer before giving up. What makes it impressive is how far the chemistry itself has come. The stuff inside today's Duracell cells is light years ahead of what you would have bought off the shelf even 10 years ago. They've squeezed out more power, stretched the shelf life, and made the whole package more reliable, all without changing the size. So your AA battery still looks like the same old AA battery, but it's been hitting the scientific gym behind the scenes. It's a little like upgrading your phone every few years, except your batteries keep evolving without forcing you to learn a new charging cable. They just keep slipping into the same remote slot, the same flashlight, the same controller, only now with extra endurance tucked inside. Now you might be thinking, this is all great, but it's still just a battery. Does it really matter? The answer is yes. In disaster zones, when the grid goes down, batteries keep radios alive, flashlights shining, and medical devices working. Duracell even has a rapid response program that delivers free batteries to areas hit by natural disasters. In developing regions where power grids are unreliable or non-existent, a simple battery might mean a child can study after dark or a family can run a radio. That long shelf life suddenly isn't just a marketing feature, it's a lifeline. Economically, Duracell's global empire supports thousands of jobs directly and many more through supply chains. The factories not only power your gadgets, they power local communities. And that's part of why Duracell has managed to stay not just relevant, but dominant in an age when technology is constantly shifting. From its unlikely beginnings in the 1920s through military breakthroughs in the 40s to consumer dominance in the 70s and now as a global powerhouse under Berkshire Hathaway, Duracell has built its name on one simple promise, reliable power. Billions of times a year, that promise gets fulfilled in devices all over the world. So the next time you pop a copper top into a smoke detector or shove a couple into a game controller, remember the journey it's been on. From carefully tested raw materials, through high-speed assembly lines, brutal quality control, and into packaging designed to keep it fresh for years. It's more than just a little cylinder of chemicals. It's 100 years of innovation squeezed into the palm of your hand. And if you enjoyed getting an inside look at how something so small makes such a big impact, don't forget to hit like, drop your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe for more stories like this.